Hey guys and welcome to another one of my videos. As you would have guessed from the title of today's video, I am doing a story time video. a lot of my favorite youtubers do these type of videos lately and i've been really really enjoying them so i thought i would hop on the bandwagon and give a few of them a go because i have some stories to tell some of them are interesting some of them are funny some of them are just downright embarrassing but yeah sit down get a drink get a meal because we're gonna have a little chat today and i realized that i have chosen the completely wrong time of day to do a video as the sun is about to set so throughout this video you will probably see me get darker and darker good one amy good one just Amy things. Today's video is going to be all about my stay in hospital when I had anorexia as a 12 year old. I haven't spoken to many people about this because I guess it's something you just don't really speak about. But I, I suppose it's an interesting story to tell and I do personally believe that my stay in hospital did make my anorexia worse because of the way that I was managed and the way that I was treated and dealt with. So I don't even know where to start with this story because there's just so much I could say. But basically when I was 8 years old I was diagnosed with an eating disorder. At first they thought I had some sort of like gastrointestinal. GI problems and so I had an endoscopy I saw a gastroenterologist all of these and they said look I think it's actually psychosomatic so um, they thought that I was making it up in my head which I probably was and so I was sent to a dietitian I was given like really really crappy eating plans that's another story for another day and so let me know if you want that story basically I had a dietitian that made me eat junk food all day every day that's a whole nother story and so obviously because of that and because I didn't really have much professional help I relapsed pretty bad when I was about 12 years old this form took the place of a, a deep phobia of not wanting to get sick and the only way I felt like I could have any control over not getting sick was to control what I ate I was very afraid of getting food poisoning very afraid of throwing up and which I now have figured out in my head is extremely anxiety related because I still struggle with similar anxieties not so much the fear of food poisoning or things like that but similar little things but I no longer use food to manage my fear of it but when I was young, I didn't know any better. And so that year, progressively, I just started to eat less and less and less. And I would drop out food groups because I was scared of what they could do to me. So I stopped eating bread. I stopped eating... Like, I can't... This is a really long time ago. This is 10 years ago for me now. And so I, I can't remember the distinct details. But I do remember that I was eating almost nothing. And when i went it was september 2007 and we went on a school trip to canberra and i ate almost nothing the whole trip i was already very very thin and because they were serving foods that i wasn't okay with and because they were serving foods that had been touched and made by other people i just couldn't eat them and so i think i would literally have one piece of bread in the morning i wouldn't eat during the day or maybe i'd have like an apple when they gave us like our sandwiches and i wouldn't eat dinner at all and so I was like literally living for a week on a piece of bread every day and that's when I knew things probably weren't getting so good but I was already stuck in that in that mindset and there was no turning back and I remember as well when things started to get worse towards November um, I went to like a school sports carnival and the whole day I just felt like an absolute shadow like I don't even know how to describe it I felt so empty I felt so weird and there's a photo of me somewhere but I, I cannot find it at all and you can just see that I'm just hollow I'm pale and I'm very very ill at this point after that I started to feel quite strange all of the time I was very 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 thin I won't say my weight just it was like the weight of a child very very thin uh, and I started to feel really lightheaded all the time and I remember one day I just said to my mum, I was like, I don't feel right, I don't feel good and I just had to lay down on the bed all day pretty much and my parents, like, they, they did what they can but they didn't really know what to do and so when I was younger I saw a child psychiatrist and so they took me back to that psychiatrist because they thought, you know, help us and she sent me to the hospital to get blood work done and I still remember as I was getting that blood work done, you know, you have like your arm in the cuff and everything. And the nurse is coming in, she's like, oh, you're just so thin. And she made it, she made it seem like such a, such a great thing at the time, which it's weird how little things like that just stick with you and make you think like, are you an idiot? Like you can tell that I was fully emaciated and you're like, wow, you're so lucky you're thin. Like, what? 
fuck, like get over yourself. Anyway, and that, that's just a small little annoyance of mine. Well, I'm falling off. I'm, I'm on like a fitness ball right now. I don't know if you got, no, you can't see it. But anyway, that's why I'm bouncing. So, I, typical someone in a very, very deep eating disorder, I was very much in denial of what was happening. I had no grasp of reality and in my head absolutely nothing was wrong because if I acknowledged that there was a problem, I would have to sort of go about doing something about the problem and I was not ready for that. And so I remember, uh, I remember that night, it was my dad's birthday, so we had all of my family over and we got a call. And I only had blood done that afternoon. And so usually, you know, it takes a few days to get blood test results back. But I got a call from the psychiatrist, or my parents did. And they said, you need to take her to the emergency room the next day immediately. Like, her health is in danger. And so even then, even then, I was still like, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm completely fine. But I remember crying. I was really upset about it. And I just remember sitting on my bed and my parents were there and my grandparents were there and... This is, this is a fun fact about Amy. My granddad, he said to me, here, here is my cross, this will keep you safe. And it's beautiful gold Celtic cross. And that is why for the past 10 years, pretty much every single day, I've worn a cross. This is one that I bought myself in Scotland because I didn't want to keep wearing his one, it's quite valuable. But yeah, that's, that's why I wear a cross. And he gave me that cross and he said, this will protect you. And so the next morning, I still remember getting up and measuring out my 20 grams of cereal and eating that and still being in complete denial. And we went there and we waited in the emergency room for five hours, five hours. And I, it's funny because I remember thinking, I am so hungry right now and I actually want to eat, but I can't because they're making me wait in this emergency room. But anyway, I got assessed and I was very, very ill. Basically, I had something called, I can't remember what it's called right now, but I will insert, insert the name here. It's like hypokalemia. I, yes, it's hypokalemia. That's it where your potassium levels are extremely low. Now, as you would know, the highest rate of mortality in anorexia is due to heart attacks because the heart just gives out and this is due to lack like of potassium. So that is quite frightening for me now. At the time I was only 12, I didn't really know what that meant. No one explained to me what that meant. But now looking back at it, I'm like, holy crap, like I could have died if that went on any longer, which is absolutely terrifying and so they admitted me into a child's ward which I had never been in hospital a day in my life before except to get that endoscopy and I just remember it was like me in this big open ward with like this other three-year-old girl that just kept watching high five on repeat and my mum stayed with me the first night and I had like a portable DVD player and I just watched a film the whole night I didn't sleep because it was a foreign place and it was so strange and then the next day I got moved to an adolescent ward because I was too young for the child's ward and it meant parents couldn't stay and it was just absolutely horrible um, and I wasn't actually allowed to walk which I found quite frustrating I think I should have been given the freedom to walk I had to go everywhere on a in a wheelchair which yeah was really frustrating because I thought you know what I have legs that can work I would prefer and at that point, I didn't really know that you could use exercise as a tool to lose weight. And I know that that seems really insane, but I, I didn't know. And I'd never, I'd never exercised for that purpose. So them putting me in a wheelchair, I suppose, was making sure I didn't get extra energy output. But I wasn't even thinking of that. I was just like, I, I want to move. And I remember as well going out in the wheelchair once and everyone just looks at you and at that point i was like wow this is this must be what it like it's like to live in a wheelchair and i just my heart really went out to people that have to go through that every single day but anyway i got moved to this adolescent ward and i oh i want to preface this by saying that this was not a hospital that deals with eating disorders so we have another hospital in adelaide flinders if you're aware of it that has an eating disorder unit with all of the professionals however because i was only 12 i had to get put in a women's and children's hospital that had no experts on this whatsoever and therefore i didn't get any specific treatment the main doctor that would see me once a week was my gastroenterologist that i saw what is a gastroenterologist doing seeing someone with an eating disorder every week i saw him and I saw this random counsellor lady that I wouldn't really speak to. That's, that's all I saw. And so I spent the next four weeks in utter misery. That's one way to put it. So if you can imagine like a big open ward and there was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beds 
only protected by a curtain. Mine was here because I had a nice big window here so the nurses could watch me at all times in case I wasn't eating or I was doing something weird. Um, and so yeah, there were like all these strangers here. I had never been in an environment like this before. All I had was this bed and a TV and it was it was horrible. It was horrible. And there were no eating disorder professionals. There was a girl that was staying here that was also anorexic. She was probably about 20. And she was just a nutcase. Like she was a nutcase. I think she also had bipolar. Uh, there was another girl across from me that had an eating disorder. But again, we didn't associate with each other. There was a games room in the back, but I wasn't allowed there. And I even remember I was not allowed to go to the toilet by myself. But they had to have someone supervise me in case I was vomiting. Which, by the way, they'd never asked for any background. So they would have known that I had no bulimic tendencies. I couldn't shower on my own. I couldn't do anything on my own. My whole privacy was completely stripped. I couldn't even sleep in privacy because that massive window was there. Which, that does things to a person that properly screws someone up. And then the meals would come and I would have to like place my order every day. And they were just generic hospital meals. They weren't anything special for someone with an eating disorder. They were literally just hospital meals. And the food was crap. Like keep in mind that I was staying there for an eating disorder. I literally said to my mom, mom, can you bring me my own cereal? Can you bring me my own milk? Because I would just didn't want like cornflakes every day. I think mom just ended up bringing Milo cereal. So it's not any better, but at least it tasted better than just like cornflakes and the diet was just so lacking in substance and nutrients it was like for breakfast i'd have to have cereal and juice and then i would have like a scone in the middle of the morning and then lunch would be a sandwich which one time they bought me a moldy sandwich it literally had mold growing in it and when i said to them i can't eat this they like made this massive fuss and they're like well like there's mold in it and then in the afternoon it would be like a crumpet or a muffin or something and dinner would be some sort of horrendous cooked meal it just oh god it was it was not good and if you're trying to teach someone to have a good relationship with food that is not how to do it and i will be honest here and say that there was many dinner times where i would get catalogs i know this is wrong catalogs from the drawer next to me and i would put some of the food in the catalogs and at that stage, I was ready to fight this and I was ready to try because I I knew it was wrong and I knew I was so unhealthy and I was scared, but the food was just so horrible and I wanted them to at least think I was trying so I could go home that I would just put it in catalogs. And this is where it gets even worse. One time, I was caught hiding the food and they, they just didn't even do anything. They're just like, just make sure it doesn't happen again. What? I, I just don't... Shut up, fine. I just don't know, like, we need more education about eating disorders or something. I don't know how those people could not fathom what was going on. I don't even know if they understood why I was there. And so weeks and weeks went past and I would get my blood taken twice a week. And when I first went there, every four hours I had to get my blood pressure and my pulse rate checked, even during the night. And I hated it so much and I was so lonely because at that time I didn't really have any friends and my parents, they both worked full-time jobs, they couldn't be with me all that much. My dad would come before work at 6.30 in the morning and we'd play on my Nintendo DS for like half an hour and then he'd have to go to work and basically I'd just sit in bed all day. I had a few teachers from my school come and give me some work because I just wanted something to do, I didn't want to get behind, but something that sort of will stay with me forever is the fact that while I was in hospital of course my mom had to ring the school and say this is why she's in hospital but they then in health class they got all 60 students in my year level together and they said okay Amy's not in class she won't be in class for a while she's got an eating disorder she's in hospital and at that time we didn't have what we have now we didn't have like the understanding about eating disorders there was still a huge stigma around anything to do with mental illness and i got back to school after that time and you know i had to have half days and things like that and everyone just saw me as the weird little girl with the eating disorder and i struggled from then onwards to make and keep friends in school because i was the outsider i was the outcast i was the one with the issues and i will openly say that that has caused me huge negative consequences in the past 10 years, I still struggle making and keeping friends because I, I'm worried of what people what people might think of me. Uh, I, I get like scared that people 
are pretending to be my friend, that's a big one. And so it had consequences in that way. And another way it had huge consequences was that they did not teach me how to eat. They just tried to feed me. And I think in that four weeks, I only gained about one to two kilos. And then they're like, okay, you can go home. And then I saw a sports dietitian. And let me just say again, a sports dietitian. They sent me to a sports dietitian. Why? And again, she, she didn't really know what to tell me to eat. And if I go back on my diaries from that time and I say the things that I was eating, they're not, they're not life fulfilling. I was not eating enough. I was probably eating 1200 calories, but I was doing my best because I didn't know what to do. No one had taught me. And as a consequence, I relapsed a further three times in the past 10 years because of that. Because no one actually taught me how to look after myself and how to treat my disorder. And if, if they had just allowed me to go to Flinders, even though I was 12, I might have actually gotten help sooner and my health would have been better. But instead, I, I went to a darker place, I went to a deeper place and I was really, really impacted by it. And I don't want to like be all depressing about this, but it's just the reality of it. And I hope that something more gets done in the future to ensure this doesn't happen. I don't know if they've changed the ages or what, but it, it shouldn't happen. Pe eating disorders need to get treated as a serious illness and not just, you know, make the person eat. And that's why I don't necessarily agree with hospitalization for eating disorders because I think that it can make them worse. But what I did vow and I, I made a promise to myself is that I would never ever go to a hospital for an eating disorder ever again. And it's been 10 years and I haven't been back and I don't plan on going back because I, I worry that when people get admitted to hospital for an eating disorder once, that's not the last time, you know, once it starts, it doesn't end. But I will, I will never go to hospital for my eating disorder. I don't think I will ever relapse again. I'm in too much of a healthy mindset now and I can't see my mindset changing. My mouth is getting really dry doing this. But that's my four week stint in hospital and that is why I think it really contributed to making me worse mentally in the long run. If any of you have had a similar experience or have gone about recovery in a different way, I would love it if you leave your comments down below. We can have a little chat because I am curious to see what other people have been through. Or if you have any questions for me, please, please let me know. If you like these story time videos, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And then I know that I can do more of them because I have lots and lots of stories to tell. I hope you like this video. I feel kind of depressed now, but that's okay because it's all gonna be good. Uh, but yeah, that's my story and that's, I hope you found it at least a little bit interesting. Like maybe this was the most boring thing ever and I don't even know. But yeah, you guys let me know down below what you thought and I will see you in my next video, which will be a vlog. It will be probably a full day beating vlog. So please watch out for that. This has been Amy Louise Fit telling you my story about my stint in hospital. I'll see you in my next video, guys. Bye.